Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video in the JavaScript series and in this video we're going to talk about operators. Now they're fairly a simple topic, there's no need to stretch it down but we want to do something which is more of a practical use case scenario. So first we're going to do the basics like how everybody, everybody does it and then we're going to try to use a use case scenario on this one. So we'll be doing that in a second. First let's go ahead and do the basics of it. So what does this operator simply means? Operator simply means that we want to do some calculations. Calculations like addition, subtraction, division, maybe multiplication, and there's a modulus as well, which we use quite a lot to find the remainder. Used quite a lot, and in fact heavily while finding the odd numbers or even numbers and a bit logics like that. They are super easy to understand. It's nothing uh, really groundbreaking. And if you just want to have, let's just say we're going to have a num1, which is going to have a value of, let's just say, 7. And just onto a very side note, you cannot, you cannot actually say 2 num. This is not allowed. So your variable name should not start with the numbers. And again, please don't do that. It's not really a good idea. Although your compiler is not going to do that, it's going to throw up an error. So num2 is going to be, let's just say, 6, and we can do the basics of things like this. So if I just log the values, let's just say I want to have num1 plus num2, not like that, num1 plus, and we simply go ahead and say num2. We are pretty sure what's going to be the result. It's not really something uh, magical that's going to happen. Let's go ahead and say this one. So inside 0, 2, we are having the 0, 3, there we go, and 13. So no exception in that case. In case you are wondering how the multiplication work, I'm pretty sure you already know this one and you know the answer of that as well. So there is nothing groundbreaking. The only thing that I want to mention here a little bit that you should keep an eye, that there is a special data type that comes up when you do these mode operators. So in case you are aware of it, and I'm pretty sure you are, there are greater than and there are less than signs as well. So the most important thing that you should be aware of, let's just say I call this one as answer. And inside the answer, I'm asking the question which is num1 is actually greater than num2. So whatever the result that we are going to get here is going to be stored inside this answer. So console dot log, and we just want to display what is this answer. So this should be known to you already that we are getting it true here. So this stores a boolean value and of course it makes sense that we are having this greater than and less than and this is having a boolean value. Okay so that's pretty much it. That's all about the operators you should be knowing in the JavaScript but here is a little bit more adding a little bit sprinkle of the project that we'll be building up later on and to get more idea about that. So where you're going to use these operators? Pretty much everywhere. Let's try to have a use case scenario. Yeah I deleted all of it. It's not really a big deal. So what we want to do is we want to build a functionality on my website, Learn Code Online. Notice there are a couple of things mentioned here. There is a listing price, there's a selling price, and there's a percentage as well. So user is providing you a listing price and user is providing a selling price. You need to calculate the percentage of it and somehow we are going to display this percentage. So two data is provided to you, the listing price as well as the selling price. Now you have to provide or you have to do some mathematical calculation or simply write a program which can calculate this percentage. Pretty simple, pretty uh, fun thing to do but this is going to give you that yeah these all things are actually used in the real world and there are separate programs for that. Just like we're going to write similar one here. Okay, first and foremost, how we are going to calculate the discount percentage. So I'm going to call this one as uh, simply D for discount. And how do we calculate that? In case you don't know that, that's actually pretty easy. We simply go ahead and say list price. I'm going to abbreviate them so that it makes much more sense. So simply just take your list price and subtract uh, the selling price of that. So I'm going to call this one as S. And what we have to do is we have to divide all of this. So let's go ahead and wrap them up inside a bracket. And we're going to wrap them up. And this whole thing needs to be divided by the list price. And then finally, we are going to multiply all of it by 100. And that's how you get the discount person. Just to remind you again, we simply go ahead and say list price subtracted by the selling price. And all of this is divided by the listing price. Simple, easy formula, nothing uh, groundbreaking on this part. And in case you're wondering about that, it's not really a tough formula being available everywhere and you have studied it in the maths as well. Okay, now here's a one more point that I would like to mention. 
there are certain times that you're gonna see the things like this which says a plus b which is multiplied by c and is gonna be divided by d and again gonna be multiplied by e or something like that. Now these things looks fantastic in case you are having some of the mind trick things or in or maybe an interview questions or maybe a university exam this is a horrible job in the production grade please never do that in case you want to have specific things make sure you wrap up the things which you want to do for the first time as with a parenthesis and if the result needs to be done first then wrap them up further in the parenthesis this is a good practice if you're going to write the previous one where you're just not mentioning which operation should be performed first you're gonna get a call from your manager, so don't do that. And this looks good in the university exams. After that, this has nothing to do in the real world production, so please avoid that. Okay, moving forward, now let's come on to this. So first and foremost, let's just say we are having this actual price or selling price. Let's just call it as selling price, otherwise it's gonna be getting confused. So we're gonna call this one as a selling uh, price. So selling price is gonna be uh, what we are calling it, the list price and the selling price. So let's just call it as. So the selling price is actually 199. And then we are going to have a list price or listing price. And that listing price is actually 799. Now coming on to the point, how we're going to calculate this one, we know the formula. So it's going to be pretty easy. Let's just call it calculate that. So we're going to first and foremost are going to say discount uh, percent so how do we do that? Pretty simple. First and foremost, we take uh, 799, which is our list price or listing price. So 799 is going to be subtracted by selling price. There we go, or 199. Okay, so this is what we need to do. But again, since we are doing them inside the variable, let's just go ahead and replace them with the variables. So let's just say list price. So using the formula, listing price is going to be subtracted by, oops, subtracted by selling price. Then we're going to wrap them up. So make sure you put a parenthesis here. Good coding practices. Again, divide that by list price. So listing price. And then we are going to wrap all of this. Again, we don't need it at this point, but I'm going to still do it. And we're going to multiply it by 100. There we go. So this is going to give me a calculation of that. Okay, pretty easy. I'm going to just hide this one so that we can see the entire code. Now, let's just go ahead and see if we can display this one because there is a small issue here. So let's go ahead and say we want to see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and concatenate it. So discount price or discount percentage is, and then we are gonna actually add discount. Let me just copy this because I make a lot of typos. Okay, there we go. Now let's go, let's just go ahead and run this to see what is the problem that we are facing. Right now it is calculating everything absolutely fine. It says 75.09% is the discount that we are giving on this course. Okay, but does it look good? No, not at all. It should be saying all the time 75%. So we know that at this exact moment, I want to deliberately lose some information on the data. For example, I'm really not much worried about 0 0.09386 of the percentage. So this is a use case scenario where you'd like to round things up. Now notice here, just like we have been using console.log, which has a property of take everything, whatever is inside and dump that on my screen, there are many such modules and libraries available to us, which we eventually are gonna study. One such library is math. So we're gonna call this one as here. Let's just store it inside another variable. So I'm gonna call this one as display discount percentage. Again, having a good variable name, having a longer variable name is totally acceptable. In fact, it's good. What we're going to do is we're going to call one such library, which is math. And it has an it has a method here, which is round. And inside that we can pass on these things. So I'm going to pass on a discount person. I could have done it here directly, but I want to keep things short, simple and easier to understand as of now. So we're going to go ahead and simply have a log console.log and there we go and we're going to simply say uh, display discount person let's see what this one is giving us this time let's clean it up and run it up and there we go previously it was saying 75 and now it is saying just the 75 
So there we go. We have created a simple functionality on the website, which is all the time displaying at the listing price and the selling price, and we are able to display that. Now, in case you want to display it exactly like this, then we can go ahead and concatenate it with it like that, something like that. So percent off, there we go. Save that and just for fun, let's run it one more time. And there we go, 75% off. So throughout this series, I will walk you through with these similar situations, which are absolutely 100% use case, and we will be using them later on. And this gives uh, things a little bit more interest rather than just having an example of A plus B, A minus B, A divided by C, and all of these like that. Now, there are a variety of such examples we're going to be taking care. This one was just percentage calculation of the discount. We're going to have much more fun in the later videos. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, and let's catch up in next video.